To me, no film has adapted a work of literature with a successful blend of style and substance like Tom Ford's A Single Man, based on the Christopher Isherwood novel of the same name. The stylized film is popular among critics and audiences alike. It's one of my personal favorites and I find myself always able to talk about it. This is because Tom Ford successfully utilizes every type of film language to create an excellent work of art. However, today I will be focused on, on his use of color. Most of the notable color work in this film was created through a process called color grading, usually used to ensure tonal and aesthetic consistency in a film. However, Ford use, utilizes the process much more creatively. He confirmed in an interview with Collider that his use of colour was designed to help the audience understand what George was feeling, saying, At the beginning of the day, George is depressed. Everything is flat, colour is flat because he's not seeing colour. His flashbacks are vivid because that's when he's alive. The colour heightens when George really starts to look at things, and their beauty pulls him in. I thought you'd probably pick blue. Why blue? Isn't blue supposed to be spiritual? What makes you think I'm spiritual? Patty Bellantoni refers to these blue colours as melancholy blues and as the detached colour. This sums up George's predicament. He is a man drowning in his own grief and in depression. He is detached from the world and is unable to come to terms with his own suffering to the extent that life is now painful for him. His depressive state is made worse as he's haunted by the death of his partner. Before George even wakes up, the colours have clearly conveyed to the audience the state our protagonist is in. While the nightmare is over, the coldness remains as he realises the distressing dream was true and that he must now face the day. Most of George's day is grey and flat as he struggles to enjoy life. However, darker colours find their way in, like this billboard that appears after George has purchased the means by which to end his life. And you, red? What does red stand for? Oh, a lot of things. Rage, lust. No kidding. Bellantoni refers to red as the caffeinated colour capable of achieving whatever latent passions you bring to the table. In George's case, it's passion for life in general. Ford uses these warm colours to juxtapose with the depressed colour palette that's usually in play. For example, the previously blue billboard is a much warmer colour when George has someone to talk to. Quick changes convey George's appreciation for the small moments that bring him joy. Admiring his receptionist or taking a moment to cuddle a fox terrier. The conspicuous colour changes allows the viewer to perceive the world as George does. As the colour rapidly changes from his grey conversation to his lustful joy, of a men's tennis match. Well, if it's going to be a world with no time for sentiment, Grant, then it's not a world I want to live in. Memories of Jim are warm because they are when George was happiest and felt most alive. Like always, though, warm memories are cut short by the cold return to George's life. Kenny is most often shown in a warm light, conveying George's affection for him. The frequent shades of red conveying a budding relationship which appears to be the culmination of warm events that lead George to find the worth in living and to burn his suicide notes. It is notable that the cold and blue room he woke up in is now warm and inviting. His death in many ways mirrors his waking up that morning. While incredibly sad, the now warm screen reflects George's new frame of mind, reassuring the viewer of his last moments and the happiness of them. The perfect representation of the film and of its masterful use of colour. Thank you very much.